this is Tina welcome back to my channel so I'm here to do um, a video continuing on from the easy snippet strips uh, that were Joey Duffy's original idea so if you caught my last video I had made those wonderful strips um, and I loved them so much I was then struggling to actually um, use them because I just loved how they felt and things so as you can see, I've made a whole bunch more because I absolutely loved making them. So I've got a whole um, few of them, you know, here. And as you can see, they all need to be trimmed down and tidied up yet. But what I then did was, I was then thinking, well, how can I try and keep them in their entirety rather than actually kind of cutting them down into the, the strips? Because although they're lovely, I was struggling to actually part with them. So I came up with these envelopes and um, yeah, I absolutely love how these envelopes look. They feel super squishy and super, well, just gorgeous. So yeah, I really, really love them. So I, yeah, like, like either the envelopes or the snippet strips, um, but just love this whole um, like addictive way of making these sheets of paper. So, um, yeah, I thought that's what we could do is actually make the envelopes on here. So I'm just going to kind of take my, one of these uh, strips of paper and actually tidy it up and we'll get making one. Okay, so that's all looking a little bit tidier now. And then the first thing that I did was I just reinforced it by putting another sheet of book page around it. And obviously the only reason I had to do that or felt the need to do that was because, you know, this is effectively, this is just book page and obviously is, you know, a little bit sort of flimsy and um, yeah, not sort of super strong or anything like that. So then all I did was obviously stitch that around on my sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is start by, to, you know, to um, stitch this in. Take what's going to be your bottom flap of the envelope. Let me move my sewing machine out of the way so that I can fit you in better. So take the bottom flap and then what I did was I just folded it over like that. And hopefully that hopefully that's going to help to obviously as well hold your book page in place a little bit as well. So then what I'll do, I'll bring my sewing machine back. And what I'll do is start my stitching. So I'm going to use that zigzag stitch. Okay, and I'm just going to go across that foldy flap that I just that second folded down. And I'll show you in a second, basically, you know, how that looks and why we've done that. So obviously that's so that this flap here, it's not then the separate book pages, it's nice and strong, it's, you know, it's got a neat finish to it. So that's basically why we've done that. And then all I'm going to do is just literally go around my edges, securing the book page down. Okie dokie. Yeah, I just absolutely loved the feel of these snippets so much that after I'd kind of cut a couple down or, you know, torn a couple down, I got to thinking, you know, what could I do with them where I was actually leaving them in place because um, they were so scrumptious to hold. I didn't necessarily want to kind of have to, um, you know, cut them all down, but I do love them equally as snippets. So I think sort of some and some really. So I'm just going to go down now on the other edge, like that. And at the moment, my top flap is hollow, if you see what I mean, I've not stitched that in. So again, I'll show you in a second. Now I'm stitching this down because obviously I don't want to not be able to fit this in around my camera setup. Obviously, in an ideal world, I probably would have stitched this the other way, I've got to be truthful. There we go. And just trim that down like that. Okay, so that's going to be the formation of my envelope. And then I'm just going to fold it up, you know, approximately where, you know, where I would like the envelope flap to be. So that looks like a pretty good place to me. And then all I'm going to do is just stitch it down here. So I'll just stitch it a little bit and then I back, back stitch it 
just so it's really nice and securely stitched down. And then I go all the way round like that. And then I go across the bottom. I mean, again, I don't know whether you necessarily need to go across the bottom. Um, you know, have a play and see kind of what you think. I go across the bottom just because I think that just adds a bit of extra security to those pieces of paper and things like that. But have a play because it may be that the bottom stitch isn't really necessary to be perfectly honest. And then just come up the side like that again. And then just again back stitch that a little bit to, you know, so that your um, fold pocket you know this part of the envelope is properly secured okay and then what I did on the previous one I then just trimmed it down because obviously my book page is not necessarily you know absolutely um what's the word even at the edges and things like that so at this point that's why I've just come in fractionally to the edge I can just go around the whole thing and just then you know tidy it up like that get rid of some threads let me just bin bin those bits okay so then what you've got is obviously your flap here and you're just going to you know bring that down to approximately again where you want it and of course you want to leave room in there to be able to get you know plenty of things in so I'm just going to bring it down there and then as you can see I'm just going to then stitch across here, which will secure all of those bits of paper and obviously the two book pages. Now, again, you could fold this over to reinforce it. I'm not going to do that because my flap would then end up a little bit short, but of course you could do that. So I'm just going to go straight across as close to the edge as I can get really. Okie doke. So we're nearly there. Okay. Okay, and then just take that out. And that's it. And that's your envelope. And obviously, I mean, they've got this wonderful, tactile, lovely feel to them. They're very soft and puffy. I mean, I just, <laughs> there's something about something that's kind of, a little bit squishy and um, nice to hold, isn't there? So these definitely fit that bill. So then obviously I decorated my one up. So again, I've got some lace little bits here and things like that. Let's just have a look. Not sure about that lace actually. Let me just see what else I've got in my bag beside me. Obviously I'm filming in my kitchen. So, I mean, when I'm filming in the kitchen, I just bring a bunch of stuff with me just you know, so I've got a few options, but of course I haven't got my entire stash or anything like that. Well, I quite like the brown actually. So what I might do is trim this down, you know, to take that wavy edge off. Sometimes I don't mind the wavy edge. I left it on the, left it on the other envelope that we did or that I, that I did previously. Um, but on this one, because the color I think is quite contrasting it just needs a bit of a bit of a softer edge I think well not softer I mean obviously the waves probably were softer but you know it just doesn't doesn't need that sort of wave there I think so just trim that down it doesn't have to be straight or anything I mean I quite like the eclectic sort of look so that's that now on the other one I did use a um, piece of ribbon as a little tab here. I don't think I've got any more ribbon actually in my bag with me. So I'm just having a quick look to see whether I've got anything else that might be, you know, just ideal to use. I don't know whether I have, but I have got lots of my, my dyed flowers. Don't know whether that's, I know that's quite a, you know, kind of contrast but I'm thinking this has got these yellows and browns kind of in the flowers and it maybe would look quite good. Just picking up those elements, what do you think? Not sure. 
Not sure. Let me just see whether I've got any more pinky toned flowers in here. Of course, as well. I mean, I just bunged, you know, a ton of these in the envelope, and you know, it's going to be just typical that I won't have any that are quite the right colour that I would like to use, isn't it? No, I can't really see any. Well, I have got that dark red actually. Let's just have a look. Um, and that's kind of quite nice to be honest well let's stitch the lace down and then we'll go from there so just hold that lace in place and then just oops, stitch that down okie dokie yeah it was really nice to um, you know to find a way to keep these intact. Because as I say, I just love that feel of them. Okay, let's just take that out. Down at the end. Get rid of these threads at that end as well. I'm using the black thread just because I think it's quite a nice contrast with the um, you know, the lace and with the envelope and things like that. But I mean, of course you could use, you know, white or anything else really. I just, sometimes I think there's nothing nicer than the black thread. It looks really, I don't know, impactful. I sometimes think, you know, the white thread doesn't necessarily show up so brilliantly. And sometimes, you know, if you're going to the trouble of stitching, why not have it show? So, just went round that lace kind of at the edges just so it wasn't flapping around. So again, just trim off those threads a little bit. Okay. Right, I can't decide now. I mean, we could have, I guess, a flower sort of over that, you know, that side. There's the one that I chopped. I don't know now. Uh, this is the problem when you do videos away from your desk, you know. I mean, I bring a ton of stuff, but it's just guaranteed you're not going to have quite the right thing that you would like to have, aren't you? You know, no matter how much stuff you bring, it's just going to be typical that you're not going to have quite the thing that you actually do want. And annoyingly, I've just found I had this fabric, which would have made an ideal tab. And I don't want the tab going over the lace. So, yeah, I'll just kind of... Uh, Forget about that, that idea. I have got obviously some more of those pink flowers, but I don't think they're quite right. Let's have a look. Again, I haven't got my ink with me or anything, otherwise I could have again inked that flower up really. And then it would have perhaps tied in a bit better, but yeah, I didn't bring that. Didn't bring that along, so I won't be able to do that. Right, well let's just go with what we've got. So obviously on this one, as you can see, I decorated the back up with just a couple of bits. So I thought we'd do very similar here. So again, let me just have a look through my bits and bobs and see what I've got here, you know, with me. Mm, that label's very, very tiny on that, isn't it? Not, not making a big impact at all. Now I've also got some of this gorgeous, this is the food colored doilies that I did a few weeks back. Oh, that's very pretty on there, isn't it? I'll just tear that down a bit. I love the colour of these. They're just gorgeous, aren't they? Hmm. Is that a bit strange now because this is not really, you know, doily patterned? Would I be better off with just a sort of smidgen? Let's have a look. I, I don't want to use that label, I don't know why I keep on bringing that in. It was just, that's what was there. So let me just have a look beside me and see whether I've got anything else that's, you know, shouting at me to be used. I've got some of my little Victorian ephemera pieces, so I wonder whether I could use something from there. Honestly, I just find, you know, no matter how much stuff that you've got, you often just really don't have quite the right thing because obviously I'm looking for something that, you know, landscape rather than portrait. 
and um, these are all pretty much portrait direction which how annoying is that weirdly I'm just kind of drawn to this lady I don't know why that would be and I've got her in copy paper rather than card let me just tear her out I don't know why but she just was kind of calling to me for some reason I have no idea how she's going to look why why she was catching my eye but for some reason she was well I guess I could have her kind of like that I mean obviously I haven't inked any of this up either so you know I might actually ink some of this up and then it would obviously have quite a different appearance anyway so um, there is that to bear in mind could have a little bit of that pink which what did I do with the rest of the brown that I just used because um, probably for a bit of continuity you should probably use a bit more of the brown shouldn't I otherwise the brown just seems a little bit a little bit out of nowhere sort of a bit random the brown was otherwise so I could have it like that to be honest that's quite pretty Obviously, you know, this is not inked up or anything yet. So, I mean, once it gets inked up, it will change appearance quite a bit anyway. So, yeah, I might do that. I'm just wondering whether I could have some of this in the background. So, again, this is just on copy paper. So, it's nice and easy to use with things like this. isn't it right I quite like it like that I think so let me just grab my glue oops did you see what happened there my um you know pin end has just come off so now my pin is now very difficult to get to oh that's annoying isn't it Right, okay, let me just pop that to one side. I've got my fabri -Tac here, so I will just use that instead. So, oh, I say that I will use that. I will use that, obviously, if it wants to play. Oops, let me just... Okay, right. Okie dokie, right. So, that one, just pop that down there, try and make sure I have it the right way up rather than upside down. And then we'll have a bit of that gorgeous pink doily. I just love the colour of this one. I mean, I did experiment around with the food colouring and obviously some came out better than others. Um, but this was a kind of pink colour that I mixed with coffee and yeah I mean I just absolutely love that pretty colour it just looks absolutely gorgeous right now do I want her further over that way or that way probably that way otherwise she's veering onto the the centre of the envelope which just looks really peculiar then so shall I have a bit of doily down there or I could have a little bit more up here Right, I'm just going to have a little bit more over to that corner. Okay. And just pop that down like that. And then glue this piece down. and have her sort of slightly over I don't want her looking like she's in the middle because that just it's a bit strange for the eye isn't it I know that Barbara um, 49 dragonflies she always has a rule of odd odd numbers and yeah definitely I agree I think because um, well not I think I do agree because if you have things in evens for some reason they look strange they look like they then need something in the middle you know in between them so um yeah i think even is definitely you know better 
I don't know why, you know, why that is, but for some reason, just, I think maybe because your eyes need to be drawn to a focal point. And of course, if you've got even numbers, then it is drawn to a focal point. If they're odd, uh, sorry, odd numbers, if they're even, then they're not really drawn to a focal point at all. They're kind of, um, well, I guess lacking, lacking a focal point to some extent. Now I'm just wondering, I quite like it at the top, strangely enough, and then I could have just got that little off cut of the pink lace I could have down there. That's quite pretty, isn't it? You know, because this is going to be inked up, and I keep saying that, but it is surprising always the difference that the inking does make. So without wanting to sound like a scratch record, <laughs> you know, the ink will make it, you know, quite significantly different to be honest so there we go and then just pop that down there and again I might just trim off that wavy you know header piece like that yeah I can't wait to have fun with the rest of my little snippet sheets that I've made they're really nice and um, yeah I'm going to have a bit of fun with them. I'm probably going to take my daughter to my mum's house later to visit. So I shall chuck them into my bag of stuff and um, take them and play with them, I think, whilst I'm there. I always take my craft bag to my mum's house whenever I go there. <laughs> you know, so that I can kind of have a cup of tea while I'm crafting and stuff. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be coming with me there. I mean, my mum's not a crafter. I think she thinks I'm mad. You know, what is wrong with me? Why do I why do I bring my craft things everywhere? But you do, don't you, as a crafter? It's horrible being parted from your craft things. There we go. Right. So that's how that's looking now. So that's the back of that. Absolutely gorgeous. And then the front. So I feel like I need to have something now to just tie the front in with the back. So I'm going to have a little bit of, again, the pink, um, what do you call it? Doily. And then I might have this little piece here. So just have a look. There we go. Yeah, I spent um, all last night kind of, uh, you know, tearing strips of paper and making those whilst we were watching TV. So that was my activity for the evening last night. It was good fun. So this morning I just quickly came down and uh, stitched them together ready for my video. Right, so I'm just going to pop this on here. And excuse my hands, again, I have obviously been playing with other things, so yeah, already I'm very messy this morning. Does not take long, honestly. <laughs> no sooner am I up than I'm in a mess normally. Okay, and just pop this one down. Oops, just take that piece off. And again, this is just in copy paper. But it just makes it nice and easy to pop it on. I still want something along here. I'm still not quite sure what it is that I need. So it might be that I haven't got the perfect thing actually here, to, you know, with me today. It might be that I need to kind of rummage through my stash when I go back to my desk. So I don't want to put the wrong thing down just for the sake of putting something down. I'd probably rather save it until I go back up. I'm just literally... Just having a bit of a look through my bag if I've got anything else. I really don't think I have. Got a tiny flower. That's not really going to do it because that's very tiny on there, although it does look quite cute down there. And let's have some bling on here. So I'm just going to pop that flower down just there on the side. Okay. And then just let's have some bling on this because, wow, we are just like slacking. Slacking in the bling stakes here. Not got any bling going on. Right, 
And to be fair, having that bling on there just sort of saves it from necessarily needing, um, you know, something in the middle. The bling actually is kind of focal point enough, isn't it? So I may not even need to put something in the middle now. There we go. Okay, so as I say, I mean, obviously I'm going to ink this up and that will really quite change the appearance of this, but aren't they just gorgeous? And yeah, I mean, that was just from that gorgeous snippet sheet and they feel just lovely. I hope you can sort of hear that and get a bit of a sort of feel for it, but oh, they're all paddy and squidgy and gorgeous. I didn't put any bling on this one actually. Do you think this one needs it? Mm, maybe it needs some at the bottom weirdly enough and over that ribbon which made a horrible job of sewing I did a very very rough ruffle yeah I quite like that so I'm just going to pop that on there Hold on. Oops. okay sorry for the rustling of the bag I've bought a bag along obviously as my rubbish bag so you know that's where I'm kind of putting things and that's where I'm putting my glue in between using it so it's not oozing out anywhere gorgeous so I love how they look and I mean they both look really different don't they they've got completely different sort of appearances but yeah I just love those so I hope that that gave you a couple more ideas for using the snippets um you know I think they're really really nice and the other thing is you could always use your snippet roll which I obviously haven't got any now because the ones I made in the last video are still upstairs now but you could always do your snippets so tear them down into the snippets like we did in the last video and decorate them and then put those on to your envelopes they would actually be super super nice so perhaps I will have to do that hmm, perhaps I'll do that I think I've got time. I don't know what time I started filming because I know I stopped the video, but I think that was pretty close, you know, pretty near the start. So, right, let me just hold on and go and get another sheet of book page to be able to reinforce one of these. And of course I need to decide which one I'm going to use, which again, I'm struggling because I don't really want to use any. I'm not to use them because I just really, really love them. Which, wow, what, what is that about? Well, that one's really nice, isn't it? Uh, just seeing what snippet roll we would use with this. I mean, really, probably it's better off having a sort of contrasty one, isn't it? Yeah. Perhaps I will use this to make the envelope. Hmm. I just can't bring myself to use them. Right, okay, let me go and get some book page. Right, so I have just been and got um, some, you know, another piece of book page and I've obviously snipped off the edges of this to neaten it up. So I'm just going to put that there exactly as we did with the last one and then start by the, you know, that folding of that sort of, you know, what's going to be the inside of the envelope piece. And then I'm just going to stitch across there, just like we did last time. So straight across. I mean, as I say, I don't know whether this part is essential. I just do this because then it's really nicely, um, you know, it's nice and firm. It's not kind of like flimsy and weak and it's not got those separate book pages, which I sometimes find that they're a little bit, um, in the way when you then put things in and out of a pocket. So that's why I quite like to do that. And then you're just going to fold it up to make your, you know, your foundation piece for your envelope. So just again, like that. And I mean, the good news is I haven't got any glue on this, so it's not got any sort of ridges or anything. They're just pieces of paper. And then again, what I'm going to do, I mean, as you can see, I haven't quite come up to the edge on this. So I'm just going to go down sort of here for my envelope shape and again I just backstitch that just so that it's really nicely you know when you're putting things in and out the envelope 
it just is nicely firmly closed so then we go down like that and then turn it round just do along the bottom like I said before I don't know whether really the bottom is essential you know that's just how I did obviously the first one so you know that's how I just thought I would do these so over there nearish to the edge and then up here as well and again I'm not going right next to the edge because I will then you know neaten it up and sort of tidy it up in terms of cutting it down to size so we've got that like that and then I'm just going to trim the whole thing down so just coming in you know pretty close to that stitching like that and then up this side just like that okay Oops, so I've got some very long threads there just get rid of those and just then pop that in my, my rubbish bag okay and then I just fold my flap up I don't know quite what's happened here but for some reason this is now much longer than the other piece oh well it doesn't matter because I can trim that down so I'm just going to fold that flap over here like that and then again I'm just going to stitch across here have I done something wrong I'm not sure whether I've done something different to to last time I don't know right let's let's go around the edge like that and then across here I'm thinking actually what I did the time before was I'd left this portion kind of open I think and that's the thing you know I don't know about you guys but I don't necessarily have a fixed way of doing things it just you know it's as it happens that time <laughs> so clearly this time is completely different to the other two two envelopes that I've done so what I'm going to do is just trim across here because I don't want that obviously you know longer poking out from there just snip my threads down oops could move my another new pair of scissors I just always buy those three packs and I've said it tons of times before but from Ikea they're just really great and um, I just always use the large pair okay so I've probably got some more spares upstairs I know that I've got several pairs anyway dotted around right so that's my envelope now got my clusters obviously that we made in the last envelope so I did quickly grab these whilst I was um, you know off getting that book page so that's how this would look then to actually incorporate the cluster I mean actually isn't that gorgeous so you could have like the cluster going across at the flap or you could just cut a little portion of it and have it down there I really really love that going across the flap actually so I think yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I just want to make sure that it's going to be in place enough. So I might have to move it up slightly. More, yeah, more like that, I think. So just going to stitch that across there. Like that. I mean, this was totally again not what I had planned I actually was going to cut it and have just a little portion of it somewhere but actually didn't it look great just on that flap so you know you really can't tell what you're going to actually choose to um, go with and then I'm just going to stitch it down on this side as well so and then I'll obviously trim that down so it's in line with the flap Off. right so what I'm going to do is obviously trim it down here like that and on this side as well like that, Oops. Like that. and just bin this Oops. I'm trying to tidy as I go because um, otherwise I'm going to have bits kind of all over everywhere and then they'll keep appearing you know for the next few days so there we go Oh, I absolutely love how that looks. 
really really love that now obviously I've got here like a sort of gap so I could go down that with some more stitches or I could just run some glue down I think I'm going to run glue down because I might have sort of overdose of stitching otherwise so I'm just going to run the glue straight across there like that and then just you know press that down I just thought I might have a bit too much stitching if I stitched that as well but oh my gosh that is so lovely I don't very often do colorless things to be honest you know neutrals I love color so I'm you know very often go for color but I love that so much that's just so gorgeous right so let's just see what we could put on the back um, so I mean again we could put some more snippet roll or we could just kind of put something else there all together so let's just see about something else I mean that's not particularly neutral I know and it was really nice having that neutral look so I might have to might have to put something else there let me just move my sewing machine back so, so that I can make sure that properly in screen again I can't really see the screen unfortunately I'm on a stall and obviously without kind of keep moving I can't really see to check that I'm in frame which is a bit of a shame but right so we've got that one um I just want to check that we do want that one I haven't got anything a bit more colorless I have got that postcard actually Oh, I'm now really kind of going down the colourless route. Look. Let's just have a look at this one. It's every now and then. It's quite nice to do something with not too much colour, isn't it? Okay, let's just turn that down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I prefer the... The colourless, the postcode in the colourless. Now again, do we want it to one side? I think this time I'm going to have it in the middle. So I did also unclog my glue quickly whilst I went to get that bit page. So, you know, pulled that stick pin out, the bit that was remaining anyway. Okay. Then we can just glue this down here. Oops. Like that. Pop that there. Ah, oh, that's so nice, isn't it? Yeah, I love how this looks. It's so pretty. Right, and then do we want a little bit of lace? Because we've got obviously lace here on the front, so might just have a little tiny bit somewhere. We could have another piece here. That's quite nice, isn't it? I think I'll just put that there. Oops, grab my fabric tech oops check I've got that the right way up I think I have but it's always very hard to see to be honest right I'm going to have that on there just so I've got a little bit hanging over at the bottom and then on the other side oh it's pretty because you can just see that little bit of lace there but on the other side maybe I will have another piece it's about to chop that down and then I thought oh, perhaps we could have a really big bit but that might be really 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 ginormous and just like way 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 too big so okay yeah I definitely need to um dig out some other scissors from my my scissor stash Right, now do we like it going right the way across? Sometimes I'm not so keen on it going right the way across because it looks a bit sort of intentional as if I really put it there on purpose. I know that sounds really strange because of course I have really put it there on purpose but sometimes it's better to not have that really intentional look, isn't it? Oh, I quite like it on that corner, I think. So again, I'm just going to glue that down and I'll just... Just try and put the glue in those holy parts, uh, not the holy parts, the filled in parts of the lace, not the holy parts. <laughs> it's very difficult to get the filled in parts of this lace. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to sort of raggedly cut that like that. 
So it's overhanging a little bit. That's really pretty, isn't it? I have got some little ivory flowers, which again, I picked these up when I rushed and got the book page. I was only gone for a couple of minutes, but it sounds like I had gone off like shopping or something because I grabbed all sorts of bits whilst I was up there. But so that piece there, so I've just got that cute flower, just adds a little bit something more. Now, do we want a flower on this side? Uh, probably not. Mm. Well, perhaps we should, perhaps we should. Here? What do you guys think? Or down there? Maybe down there. So I'm just going to glue the flower down there. That's it. And are we going to have this as a bling-free piece or are we going to have some bling? So let me just again pull in. I mean, look at this great big, great big sack. This is a 12 by 12 paper um, bag, would you call this? You know, like when you buy paper um, over here, if you ever buy individual papers from Hobbycraft, which is like our equivalent of Joanne's, um, then you get your papers in one of those little sack bag things. I haven't bought any individual papers, like literally for years. So I've obviously had that bag for a really, really long time. But it is quite handy. Right, do I just want some pearl trim on there or shall we have it plain? Oh, let's have the pearls. Again, that's just that last bit of pearls. Well, actually, to be fair, I've got some more at my desk, which I thought was the last of it. But then obviously I already had put some into this little bag. Because again, I keep this bag in my, my big bag that I take to my mum's. So, so I've got bits and bobs there. Right, so that's that envelope. Aren't they just gorgeous? I just love them. So, yep, if you haven't made any of those gorgeous, easy snippets that um, Joey Defee showed on her channel, then do go on and check them out because, wow, they are so fun. Um, <laughs> obviously, as you can see, yep, I really do need to trim these down, but I was just so excited to come and have more of a play that I didn't. Um, but I do absolutely love them. So that's those. And these are obviously the three envelopes that we've made using the snippet strips base if you like so yeah I hope that um, that's given you some ideas obviously again I will try and remember to link Joey's video below um, with her original snippet rolls and um, yeah I hope that you'll all join well my camera just flicked off there at the last minute and luckily I caught it so yeah I hope that you like all the three bits that we've made that we made using obviously you know the base from the snippets um, I guess is what I'd sort of call it um, they're absolutely lovely they're really kind of padded and squishy and um, yeah I hope that uh, you have a go at making some so thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you guys again soon thanks then bye